Preston, thank you for coming in and joining us for the Mastermind Series. I'm really excited to talk to you. Yeah, excited to be here. Awesome. So you are the CMO and one of the founders, Mm -hmm. we'll talk about the other founders in a minute, of a company called Neighbor. Why don't you give us a lowdown on Neighbor? Because it sounds really cool. Yeah. Where where do you want me to start? Start from like the initial ideation of Neighbor. I mean, definitely the tagline, the it's the Airbnb of storage. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Yeah. So Airbnb of storage, meaning that Neighbor is a peer-to-peer storage marketplace. So rather than me using Airbnb and going and staying in someone's house or using an Uber and driving a car around, Neighbor is something where homeowners that have extra space that could be an RV pad, a basement, a garage, can rent that space out to a neighbor who needs storage. So it's, it's half the price. It's closer, safer, cheaper. And where, where did this originate from? Yeah. So the idea for Neighbor actually happened. It was about two years ago. It was two summers ago. My wife and I were, were leaving for a summer internship. We were leaving the country, actually. I needed a place to store our stuff. So I started calling around looking for a storage facility because that's the only option right, out there. Right, right. Um, and most of the storage facilities in my surrounding area were already full. And the ones I could find were just ridiculously expensive. And as a poor college student, I was like, I'm, I'm not going to pay this much a month for a 10 by 10 concrete box. Mm-hmm. So, but the stubborn person that I am, I started calling around until I found actually an old neighbor of, of ours. Like back in the day, my family lived in, in Utah for a couple of years. Um, we found this old neighbor that had an empty spare garage that they weren't using. And they said, hey, you can just store your stuff in our garage for the summer. So uh, the idea came, we, we rented a truck, we dropped our stuff off. And I remember driving back, it was super late at night. It was like two in the morning. And I had this frustrated moment where I was like, everyone should do this. There are empty garages and empty basements and RV pads all over, like not just in Utah, but all over the, like, the United States. And storage is such a need that if we were able to connect, like break down that barrier and connect people with people, um, the, like storage would just be a, a better, more flexible option for everyone. So it truly came out of just, oh, well, 2 a.m. just frustration. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I love all my brilliant that. ideas too. <laughs> I mean, it's something where we've all, I think all of us have rented a storage unit at one time or another. Mm-hmm. And just the whole process, it's, you figure that's the only option for you. So this really is like a, a blue ocean. I never considered looking for a platform like that. Right. And it's not that storage facilities are bad. It's just that it hasn't been innovated around. Mm-hmm. And like, it's it's been a great business model that people have made lots of money out of. Right. But with Neighbor, this is, I think the beauty behind Neighbor is the fact that homeowners are making lots of like meaningful, meaningful income. This is a way for people to make passive income as well. So rather than, if I want to make movie, money on a platform, if, if I want to make money on a platform like Uber, like I need to go and drive my car all afternoon. Or if I want to make money in an office, I got to go sit in an office. But with Neighbor, it's, it's truly like space that a homeowner isn't using. They can monetize by opening their garage or letting someone come into their basement. It's a very non-invasive process where they set all the features for accessibility, access, etc. Um, people drop their stuff off and like months or years later, like depending on the agreed upon time, oh. um, upon the agreed upon time frame, they they'll pick up their stuff and it's it's just a really easy way to make passive income. That's super brilliant. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone's probably wondering. Now, in terms of being the CMO and educating around this because you said that you know storage units no one's innovated around it so you're bringing something that's brand new to the marketplace Mm -hmm. as the cmo have you found challenges in you know demonstrating the ease of it but also how it's better because it is better yeah it's cheaper Mm -hmm. it does provide passive income so you like with uber you have the people driving and then the people using the platform and and the other benefits Sorry, along that same vein or that it's it's closer as well like you can't find a storage unit in your neighborhood they're generally in d- differently like yeah. like i have to drive down to the older parts of town to actually find zoned areas where they're building storage facilities whereas with neighbor i can store my boat on my same street and i can see it every day or i can store it with mrs smith right there um like 20 years ago the 
20 years ago, the sharing economy would have sounded like a crazy idea. Yeah. If I had said, hop in a car with a stranger, like that's what parents are telling their kids not to do. Yeah. And like, or sleep in a, a house with someone you've never met before in Thailand. It just, like, it seems like a, a crazy, scary idea. And so the idea of storing your possessions down the street with someone that you like potentially already know isn't much of a stretch. It's a, like, it's a very natural thing. And we found that a lot of our neighbor users are already like, had been practicing neighbor with their kids or with other neighbors or friends, like even before using our platform. But now it's, it's structured, it's monetized. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm sure there's other things in place, like rules and ways to regulate around that. Totally. That's, that's, that is very innovative. (laughs) Now you launched in 2016 is when it was founded. And, you know, tell us, because I know that you've been through like fundraising and, now, like you are a fully funded platform, but what I think would be interesting for people watching is that what is that like? Yeah. An intense season of rallying like that, right? And I, I don't pretend to have like tons of knowledge on this. Like I'm learning every day and learning from both my mistakes and from the opportunities. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the experience has been, well, first, so fun, like a great learning experience. I'm passionate about it. Like love what we're doing and, and the mission of neighbor, but it, it definitely is. I don't know. There's the phrase where you, you don't see the grass grow, but it's actually growing. Like if you're looking at it and sometimes we have to look back to remember like the spreadsheet days and how we were running neighbor off an Excel spreadsheet and making phone calls and knocking doors mm-hmm. to make it work. And now we have this automated process with a really great team. Um, yeah, I think the like the the first season for us, like I was saying, was um, this idea phase where our like neighbor lived on pitch decks and it lived in Excel spreadsheets, and it was us going and trying to share this idea when really we didn't even have like working customers in those first early days. I remember. We were going into um, we were going into this pitch competition, and it was a big one that we were nervous about. I was sitting with one of my co-founders, Colton Gardner, and we realized that night before it was like 10 p.m. We don't have a paying customer yet. We can't get on a stage and say neighbor works if we don't have a paying customer. And so we started calling around, and uh, like I'm a little embarrassed, but also like not I guess not embarrassed, but it's a funny story to hear how our first paying customer was we got. Colton's dad to store a box of his yearbooks at one of our host house for $10 a month. And it was, it was one of those moments where I got on stage and I felt like a fraud, but we could say neighbor works. Like we have people using our platform. Mm -hmm. And, And since then, like obviously come leaps and bounds. And it's amazing to see when like, we'll have someone that gets on our platform that we have absolutely no association with someone else that has listed their space that we have absolutely no association with, but they see the value of neighbor. They're excited to use it and they pair and they're, paying customers, that's like a big win moment for like us as a founding team. Absolutely. So in terms of pitching something like that, when you, just that sheer tenacity of going in and I mean, who are you pitching? That was a pitch contest, but who else? What do you mean? Like who am I pitching? Yeah. Who who else were you going and like, are you knocking on doors? Oh, right. Yeah. So like we were obviously pitching to our, our future customers. So the, the early days really were knocking doors. We'd pick neighborhoods. We'd say, okay, we, we think these people will have space and, and be interested. And so it's it was this kind of reverse syndrome of rather like this reverse scenario, rather than knocking on a door and saying, would you like to buy this like pest control or alarm system, which are, are great businesses. We're actually trying to sell them on, would you like to make money? Like, would you like to make money after space? We see that you have an RV pad. Did you know that you can make money every month by letting one of your neighbors store here? And it's, it's this cool scenario where it's a symbiotic relationship. The renter themselves, like neighbor is 50% the price of traditional storage. Mm-hmm. And then vice versa, like the homeowner is making meaningful income. They'll make anywhere from 50 to two, $300 a month off our platform. Um, and so to sell them on that was just like, we're not trying to sell you a product. We just want to help you understand that your space can make you money. Now, in terms of getting started, I think now you know, with the, the internet and how that all works, maybe people starting a company assume they don't have to do that anymore. Assume that they don't have to knock doors. 
Yeah, my like my biggest piece of advice in, in starting the company was the fact that you really don't you don't need a product to start the company. In fact, I, I wouldn't recommend it. Like starting with that spreadsheet, and, and it literally was we had a list of names of people that said yes, I potentially have space, and then we were doing flyers and trying to figure out like who needs storage, and we had another list of, of those names, people that needed storage, mm-hmm. and then just calling one after the other and trying to pair them manually. It was a very scrappy process, but it was those early days we realized we had something special. People were excited to be paired. They were excited to save money. They were excited to make money. And that was the justification of like, we need to get a team. We need to build this website and we need to help like pair people. So I, I think the notion of I need to like raise a ton of money and build this fancy expensive website or app in order to make this company work. Um, it isn't the guiding principle. It should be prove it first mm-hmm. in, in your scrappy a minimum viable product way. Absolutely. Now, your background, you have, you went to the Marriott School of Business Management. I also see that you worked for PepsiCo. Yeah. So um, have you been able to use all of those skills in what you're doing now? Yeah, I like, uh, I worked, it was on a sales strategy team out with PepsiCo. And um, and I learned some really valuable skills. I learned like working in teams, like it was, it was a great Working at PepsiCo was a great experience. Like I, I learned a lot on like how to present ideas, how to sell different, um, sell different products. Um, I would also say I've had like lots of other fortunate experiences. Like I worked, um, I started my own videography company, and that really helps as a CMO to, to have the artistic guy also to be able to build content within house. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I had just like I feel really blessed to have had the experiences I have had leading up. And in terms of the the people that you started this with, there's Joseph, Colton, and yourself. You are very much the, the marketing and the storytelling aspect of it. Tell me about Joseph and Colton. Yeah, no, great question. So um, I, I met Colton first. We're actually longtime friends. We served an LDS mission together down in South America. We returned to Paraguay actually to work at a startup called Elevate Global. Essentially, it was business education. We were helping small business owners learn how to start and run their businesses. Mm -hmm. And then we interned as well together at an impact investing fund in Salt Lake City. So lots of prior history working with Colton and just really close friends. Joseph, um, Joseph is also incredible. He's got prior experience working in private equity, investment banking, consulting. And a great head on his shoulder to lead the company. And he's he's done a, a fantastic job really both hiring for our team and helping us raise money. And I would say like definitely like the credit goes to him and like uh, being able to raise money the way that we did. And you convinced Joseph mm-hmm. to leave. Yeah, so I was able to convince Joseph that Neighbor was was a better option to join right now. And it's been great. How did you convince him though? What was the, him? what was the selling point? Oh, I was, I, I just like the dream of building something. Yeah. I think there's something that like is magical about it. Lots of people that will go into consulting and this isn't obviously every consulting route, but like you'll see lots of people that eventually want to get in and build their own company. And, and this was a great opportunity with a great market fit um, that we could just start building now. There wasn't need to, to go pursue other careers. Um, so everyone on our management team is actually very risk adverse. Like if you had asked if, if we'd plan to start a company, like we would have said no way. Like we all had jobs lined up. That was the plan. Um, but the opportunity with Neighbor is just amazing. Like it's a huge industry. It's one that it's frustrating for a lot of people, like the type, like getting into a storage unit, how expensive it is, how prices will raise. Um, and, and just seeing how we can help people both on the renter and on the host side of things. And then also seeing that like there were like there were investors that were excited as well at this opportunity. It was one that like we couldn't turn down and like there's no regrets. Right, right. Now, in terms of um, you, you talked about Abby, your wife, a couple mm-hmm. of times. How has she supported you in this? Yeah, that's a good question. So uh, the idea came two years ago. So it was two summers ago. I know it was an idea phase sitting in the back of my mind for quite a while. But I remember the first time when I brought it up with her, we were on a hike in in New Mexico somewhere. And I mentioned this like storage idea and she was quiet for a while. And all she said was, that's a bad idea. Don't do that. (laughs) (laughs) So I, um, I, 
I disobeyed, or not, not that it was in order, but I, I kind of ignored that comment and I, I moved forward with it anyways. And, but ever since then, she's been incredibly supportive. And I would say the relationship has been one unique to our circumstances where in the really early days of neighbor, she was working full time and consulting. And so she was traveling Monday through Friday. And so it left me at home as a bachelor Monday through Friday, where I really was just hundred percent dedicated to neighbor and uh, like no distractions. I was able to work like, um, especially like those early days where a lot of it was manual hand to hand. Mm -hmm. And that was like, in like, that's one way that my wife has really supported it in the sense that like she was working to make it possible for me to be working. Um, and since then, like, we've just been really supportive of each other's careers. Love it. And you know what, Johnny from Homie again, he said the same thing where, you know, his wife has been, you know, she, she counsels with him. She, she is an advisor in a lot of respects. Um, but in that season of fundraising, she said, I just don't want to miss out on this dynamic of you as my husband and you as a father because it's so time intensive. So that really is unique that you were able to dedicate Monday through Friday to this thing that takes, I mean, upwards of 18 hours a day, I'm sure, mm, just sure. turning along. Now, going back to the team, Joseph, Colton, yourself, you're all really young. Mm -hmm. I mean, this really is that kind of first or second gig outside of, of college, right? So what part of that has been really, really great because you're kind of approaching everything with fresh eyes and what part of it has been maybe intimidating? Yeah, and uh, going back to the comment that like we really don't have everything figured out. Like, like I, I would say I'm surrounded by the best coworkers uh, that I could possibly imagine. Mm -hmm. Some of the smartest, brightest minds, but we, we fully acknowledge that we don't have that life experience. And so like, um, it's been really cool to see how open-minded like each of us have been to, to feedback, to guidance, to mentorship. Um, and we've also like hired some great people onto our team. Like the fourth member of our management team is Derek Isaacson. And that was like, it was a, a really big pivotal moment for us to pull over someone that was like such great life experience. Like he's also very young, but just has lots of great work experience working at great companies and previ previous, um, uh, just like skill sets that he's built. And, so and he's, he graduated from Stanford. Yeah. So he got his master's at Stanford and then he worked with Amazon, Microsoft, Domo, Lucid, and now here at neighbor. Big company. Yeah. Great companies. And, he, um, he's our head of engineering, so like responsible for building our product. And now when I look at what we have today where we've got like machine learning and pricing mm -hmm. algorithms where we can tell you how much your space is worth and like, like how they built in all of these features, it's, it's pretty incredible to see how far that we've come. And I feel like technology means that you have to be prepared to work for everything to pace that much faster because in two years to have everything, to go from spreadsheets to the technology and the mm -hmm. machine learning, um, is it an aspect of just trying to keep up? Yeah, I would say an aspect of trying to keep up, but also just like really like like very disciplined diligence on their end. Like they're very good at organizing their their sprints and their projects and what they want to build. Um, he's got a great eye for like where the product will be a year from now. And so having that vision of where we need to take it and what we need to do to get there. And then the discipline to actually ex execute on that has been a, a great asset for a neighbor. So Derek has been uh, an incredible asset to the team. For those who you know, are watching this and you know, maybe they're still in college or they've been at you know, their, their craft or in a job for a couple of years and they have an, a brilliant idea like you had. Um, Abby didn't agree at first, but I think Abby's <laughs> on board now. <laughs> What would you say that they could do? One thing that they could do to insulate themselves from the, that they just, they don't know yet. They don't know all the things yet. The things that you're saying, I don't know everything yet. I, I heavily acknowledge that. I, I would imagine that's helpful to just know, I don't know all the things. What else though? Yeah, I think acknowledging that you don't know, but then also having the, I like having the drive to want to learn. I think learning is the biggest key, like seed that needs to be like, like the key ingredient that needs to be there in order to grow. Mm -hmm. Just because like you need to learn how to get like advice on how to build the company or advice on how to raise money or advice on like how to build a, a really scrappy MVP product. And so I, I think that that hunger of like 
I don't know, but I'm going to learn and I'm going to do what it takes to learn and then to execute on that. And uh, again, coming back to that full circle, that I really don't believe like, you, you don't need a product in order to start building a company or testing your ideas. Like a lot of this can be done in a Google spreadsheet just to like prove that this works. There are customers that like have this pain point. And then from there, like talking to people about your idea, learning about it, like a lot of our early days were pitching at universities. It was pitching at local startup communities that are all over the nation. And from there, we would get feedback and we'd talk to people about how we needed to improve the idea, how we should think about it differently. Um, and then obviously that led to raising, like hiring other team members and raising money and has helped us get to where we are. So never assume that whatever you, you've ideated is is actually the thing that you move forward with. Yeah. Get the uh, feedback. There's, there's the quote, and I'm, I should probably know who I'm quoting, but like a business is like, a business is dead when you stop working at it. Mm -hmm. Like as long as you continue working and iterating, I like am a firm believer that you can make it work. And like we have that firm belief at Neighbor as well, that like we, we're not, the product isn't where it will be in two, three years from now. Um, but we have no doubt that it will continue growing. Did you ever have moments though, because trying to do the thing, but also trying to learn, like those are two almost full-time <laughs> gigs. Were there moments where you were like thrown in the towel or I feel like throwing in the towel? Oh man, that's a good question. So yeah, I, I think like, especially, especially in like the really early days, like before we had funding, before we built the team, there, there were questions of like, this is such a daunting task. If we want to be, like if we want to take this company where we would need to take it, we would need, to, like, it doesn't seem feasible that a, a couple college kids would be able to build this company. Um, I, I think what's given us a lot of, um, like, excitement and also energy is just, like, getting the feedback from our, our current customers. As we hear those stories of, of what they're going through and how we're helping them, like, you, you need storage generally when you're at either a milestone or a life crisis. Mm -hmm. Like, someone's passed away, there's been a divorce, you're moving to another state. Um, they're generally, like, these big milestones in people's lives. And so to be able to help them in those moments and hear the, those feedbacks, even when we only had a handful of customers. Like, our, one of our first customers was, like, a, an older widow in her 80s that's retired. And to hear that, like, she was able to help someone store, like, a vehicle on, on her property and make an extra 50, I think, 75 bucks a month off of that space. Like, that, that's meaningful for us to hear, like, those stories on, on how she's helping a renter and she herself is making money. And since then, hearing stories about, like, we have anything from, like, churches storing chairs while the building's getting painted to collectors storing classic cars and, and college students storing their boxes for the summer. Mm -hmm. like it, that has been something that even in those moments where it's, it's hard, like, I, I think that that's been my favorite part about neighbor is to be able to interact and talk to customers and hear those stories. Who knew that storage could be a personal, right? <laughs> personable experience. Right. And you guys are doing that and you're telling those stories. Yeah. That's exceptional. Now, in terms of, you know, you have, you have a long career in front of you. All right, what's the next milestone for you? Yeah, I like, let's see the next milestone. For us, like we, we're obviously in a focused market. Like we're, we're here in Utah as of today, it's August, 2018, but we've, um, you, we have rentable storage space in, in 26 different states, even though we really have just focused in Utah, like we haven't spent any money outside. Um, so to see that impact and to see how like people are hungry and excited for an idea like Neighbor, even across the nation. So obviously, like we're expanding to new markets in these coming months. Um, and expanding to those markets will obviously be a big milestone. But by like, getting to our next round of funding and raising more money is obviously like a, a big part of the plan. But uh, we, we really do plan to be the number one, like, no, I guess like storage solution in people's minds. When they think of storage, we want to be that household brand name of yeah, store with a neighbor. Like mm -hmm. we, we are connecting communities and helping people. Now, 26 states when you weren't actually trying to expand in those states, right? Yeah. That's first, how, how did that happen? Yeah. Uh, I mean, lots word of mouth. That's our biggest lead source. People uh, like, and again, it comes back to the experiences that our, our current customers are having. They tell their friends and families, they sign up their, their relatives and neighbors. Um, we've also had some great coverage from uh, different like news organizations that 
like have helped spread the word and people have heard about us there. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's exciting. And we've had multiple transactions in, uh, in these other states, again, without spending any money outside of the U.S. or outside of Utah. Now, in terms of, um, you know, what, what keeps you up at night, like right now? Yeah, um, the goals and like the goal. The results of, of what you're achieving. Right, and, and I, I guess it's rephrase it, like the goal of like, like wanting to grow this and be that household brand name. But um, obviously we have our goals of how many people we want to help get signed up on Neighbor and how many people like we want to add to the platform each week and each day. And that's, it's really cool to see how united the team is on, on those goals. Like we're at this young scrappy stage where we even have our, our head of engineering is like making phone calls and talking to customers like at certain points to both get feedback, answer questions and, and help iterate on the product. So um, I think that's a, it's a really cool like, rally cry that we have as a whole team um, that we're all united behind those goals. And as long as we keep hitting the goals that we, we do, the neighbor will be in great shape. And that's super powerful because I know at 97th floor, you know, we used to do these all hands meetings regularly every single week. Now it's, it's once a month, just mm-hmm. timing of everything. And at the end we would go around the room and everyone would either have a comment just overall or a comment on what we talked about in that meeting. And I remember one of the comments at the end of one meeting was, I hope we always operate like a startup. Like, I hope we always operate with that scrappiness in mind Mm -hmm. because it keeps you fresh. It keeps you innovating. And it also just keeps you, um, I don't know if it's just nerves or it just keeps you awake Mm -hmm. to everything going. Right. And and like something that I think a perspective on our team, because we're at this younger stage, like we almost think of it as every member of our team right now is part of the founding team, just because every single person at neighbor right now is making a meaningful difference and a meaningful impact. They're, they're building products or adding features or designing flyers or ads that like make meaningful impact. And it's not, uh, and obviously everyone at every company hopefully is making meaningful impact, but a, a lot of the times it's game changing ideas that it just about anyone might come up with. So we see it very much so like that, everyone at our team is is part of this founding like startup Mm -hmm. and right now the marketplace for you is pretty open i mean there's storage like Mm -hmm. traditional storage but then there's you as this alternative Mm -hmm. have you thought or have insights into what about the first copycat yeah Uh, and there are like across the u.s there are a couple like a handful of other companies that are doing something similar to us and obviously we have to keep an eye on competition, but when all said and done, we plan on building the best product that there is out there and available. And so as long as we're building the best product and we're offering um, the best features and solutions for our host and for our renters, like we feel strongly that our product will, will rise to the top. Love it. And we talked to Alex from Purple, he's the CMO at Purple, and you know, they're a, a sleep comfort company. We all know them by their, their mattresses. And I didn't realize this because they've done such a great with job with their marketing that they weren't the first. Mm. I said, no, there were other companies that were shipping mattresses and boxes. Like, but we, you know, we went about it in our way. And obviously he's very data driven. He's very analytical. You know, the competition probably served him more than anything because mm-hmm. he decided, okay, here's what I'm seeing in the marketplace. And he went for it and they've risen to the top. Oh, exactly. Love it. Now, in terms of um, kind of, I ask this of everyone. It's a big question. It's a, and this one will probably be a challenge for you. But what is it that you hope to be remembered for, as in your legacy? Yeah, no, I, I think that's a great question. And I, is this like more a personal question, to me or like a neighbor? Like, what do you hope neighbor is remembered for? So I've had it answered both ways, but I usually question. it becomes a, a more personal question. Yeah. Um, I, I like, I'm going to start like more on the, on the brand side of neighbor is really that neighbor is like neighbor is meant to help neighbors, like really just like help people helping people. Um, it, my favorite part of my job is like twice a week, I've got two, four hour blocks where I'll go out and I just, I meet our customers and I take pictures of their spaces. We have other neighbor photographers out there, but one of, one of the ways that we want to keep our, like our product both a premium product and also a real, have really close touch points with our customers is we have, like I'll go out and I'll take photos of their spaces and I'll talk to them and get to know them. This is one of the ways I know these stories, but 
Yeah, I um, love that. And, and it's cool to see that it's not just me. Like we've, our CEO will be making these phone calls. And like I said, Derek or, and, and Colton will be making tons of phone calls as well as just about everyone on our team. But I think it's that intense focus on people and like how we're so focused on that customer and their needs that like we feel confident that the product will continue to evolve in the right ways because we understand the customer. Um, so, so the legacy for neighbor is like, we really want to be making a meaningful impact. Like to hear that like homeowners are able to reduce their mortgage by 10, 15% because they're renting out a garage and to talk to a young couple like Madison and Drexler, just a couple weeks ago, we talked to them and they signed up three spaces and within a weekend we're making over $200 a month and they had just bought a home that they were having trouble, like it has a meaningful impact paying on their mortgage. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so that's one, like, as far as like neighbor's legacy and what, like, I, I hope that it's being remembered as, is like that we are helping people. Love it. Now in terms of you personally. Yeah. Personally, I, I, we're all very much like challenged the status quo. I think there's this, there's this feeling of like, this is better, like this is innovative and it will change, like meaningfully change people's lives. And, and really storage is the tip of the iceberg. Whatever I do with my life, like I want to make sure I feel that like not, not just challenging the status quo, but improving, like being a builder and being a learner. Something my, my wife could tell you is I, I really like to learn new things. Like I'll, I'll go through phases or, or times when I'm, I'll get obsessed with how to edit or, or develop or work on a new project. I'm, I like videography as a passion of mine. So I'll be out flying drones or reading books and figuring out um, how to take up a new skill. Mm -hmm. That's, um, so being a learner and like challenging the status quo is a big one for me. Love it. Well, thank you for being part of the Mastermind interview series and taking the time today. Yeah, this has been awesome. Thanks. Awesome. Okay, well, thank you again. Yeah, appreciate it.